अभी से अभी से मौज कर दी हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर सोनू पवार एंड आई एम हेयर फॉर द डेमो क्लास फॉर द एफ एम जी बैच इन द आई लैंड नेक्स्ट एंड ऑब्वियसली आई लाइक टू टेल अप दैट दिस टाइम ऑल्सो दे वर लाइक ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी फाइव क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम माइक्रो बायोलॉजी एंड एज यूजल इन द इन्फेक्शन दे आर ऑलवेज अराउंड थर्टी क्वेश्चन इन एवरी एग्जाम एंड दिस इज अ सब्जेक्ट विच इंटीग्रेट्स विद वेरियस अदर्स so obviously this is what is the crux this is the foundation on which you can have a wonderful uh, like uh, what do you say in the medicine also you will have uh, more of the things and in the surgery also you will able to do up lot of things and uh, some of the correlated ones topics which i can tell you is like uh, one of the questions came uh, of diphtheria one of the questions came of fornius gangrene so all that has been covered up in the various aspects of the microbiology also okay so let's start up uh, and i like to tell you today in the demo class uh, one of the uh, like very important topic and that is what is uh, mycology okay it's a small topic but full of questions and uh, in the latest trend uh, from the last 4 to 5 fmg exams this particular one is coming up with 3 to 4 questions so we'll try to dodge up this particular one today and uh, let's start up first of all you should know that uh, what is mycology the mycology is study of fungus okay what is mycology the study of fungus that is what is termed as uh, mycology and if you know one thing that is regarding the classifications then this particular topic is very easy for you okay so first of all if we talk about the morphological classifications okay first of all if we talk about the morphological classification based on the morphology how you divide the fungus so you should tell me how you divide up the fungus so adil the offline batch you will soon start up and uh, as in the comment section uh, there are like uh, comments like offline batch is starting up when so offline batch is very much starting in few days itself and these are the demo ones tomorrow is uh, like psm sir dr ashwini will be taking off okay already one demo of uh, medicine has happened up so morphological classification so in the morphological classification first of all you should know that what is yeast fine so there is yeast there is yeast like fine then molds and then dimorphic okay so first of all you should know that what is yeast and all so everybody tells about this is yeast this is yeast you should know what is yeast first of all so basically it's a this oval shaped structure okay that is what is termed as yeast and if a small protuberance happens like this this is termed as what budding yeast cell fine this is what is termed as what budding yeast cells so if somebody ask you that what is true yeast which particular organism is true yeast yes anybody can tell what is the true yeast so true yeast is cryptococcus okay the true yeast is cryptococcus neoformans fine so this is one of the constitutive organisms of meningitis in the hiv positive persons and cryptococcus neoformans is that sort of a thing which is asked in every exam okay and this is the most common cause of what meningitis in hiv positive ones okay the second important thing is regarding the yeast like ones so yeast like is which one the yeast like is candida okay and what is the meaning of that the meaning of this particular thing is that they are in this oval shaped structure they can have what pseudo hyphae they can have what true hyphae and this was asked in your last fmg exam only that which particular organism is there which can show up all these particular forms that is hyphae true hyphae budding yeast cells yeast cells they all are observed in what candida and that's why we termed it as what yeast like okay it can be yeast like it can be molds it can be having a hyphae or pseudo hyphae that sort of a thing is candida fine and true yeast is what they always are found in this oval shaped structure 
they always are found in this OLC structure that is what is cryptococcus neoformans is all about. Now the question was like every time now the integration is in the air so they ask up regarding the integration stuff so what they have done they have integrated the gynae with this and what they have stored a thick curdy white discharge okay and obviously you know that this is regarding the candida what they are talking about and along with that what they have added up they have added up that it is having a thick curdy white discharge and having pseudo hyphae in the examination so that is what is termed as pseudo hyphae so that particular thing is regarding what that is regarding the candida okay that is regarding the candida now talking about the malls what is a mold molds is a those particular ones which are having these hyphae like structures and some of them are what some of them are septate and some of them are aseptate okay some of them are septate and some of them are aseptate they are termed as what molds and what about the dimorphic ones the dimorphic ones are those which are both they are mold also and they are yeast also fine so both of them they are termed as what dimorphic mold and yeast so how to remember up at what temperature they are mold and what temperature at yeast so mold is at 25 degree centigrade yeast is at 37 degree centigrade so that is what is the definition of dimorphism the dimorphism is defined on the basis of what temperature the mold 25 degree yeast 37 degree centigrade is it fine and how to remember this particular stuff remember like this mold is gold and how much carat gold 25 carat gold okay remember like this and yeast is at body temperature that is 37 they are having a yeast like structure okay so here only a important thing you should know that what are the various dimorphic fungal diseases okay what are the various dimorphic fungal diseases because this is what is an important question which comes up that what are the various dimorphic fungal diseases and Archana you are uh, like perfectly told 25 and 37 and this dimorphic fungal diseases names you can remember by a mnemonic HSBC please try okay HSBC please try and what comes in HSBC please try HSBC is a bank now a costly bank you should try for that particular one so this is what is there HSBC please try and H is what H is histo okay that is histoplasmosis also termed as Darling's disease along with that S is S is sporotrichosis okay B is B is blastomycosis fine C is coccidioidomycosis and this P is paracoccidioidomycosis and this T is telaromycosis this T is what this T is telaromycosis so these are the various names which you should know of the dimorphic fungal diseases and out of them this particular telaromycosis is being asked in NEET PG twice and along with that in the FMG also they have asked up regarding the telaromycosis okay and the what is the other name of telaromycosis kya kya hai? Iska dusra naam kya hai? so other name of this is penicilliosis okay the other name of this is penicilliosis of telaromycosis so this also you should know that these are the ones which are dimorphic fungal diseases okay they are the various dimorphic fungal diseases and they keep on asking what question that all the following are dimorphic fungal disease except so how you will know that particular question except you will be knowing that only when you know all of them okay and in total how much in total these six are there which are dimorphic fungal diseases and again if you revise up histoplasmosis sporotrichosis blastomycosis coccidioidomycosis paracoccidioidomycosis and telaromycosis fine so these are the various ones which you termed as what dimorphic fungal diseases fine now after this coming to the second classification and that classification is based on what that is based on sexual spores okay that particular classification is based on what sexual spores and what are the various sexual spores remember them by this mnemonic jub okay and what is there in the jub jub is zygospore okay a is escospore 
and B is basidiospore. Okay, so these are the various sexual spores which you should know. One is zygospore, one is ascospores, and one is what? Basidiospores. Zygospores is obviously seen in which family? That is the zygomycetes. And can you tell me, guys, the zygomycetes? Another name is what? The another name of the same stuff is mucormycetes. Okay, the other name or the same stuff is mucormycetes. And this time in the exam, what they have asked up? What is the third name? That is phycomycetes. Okay, that is phycomycetes. So this nobody will tell you, because the person who knows the deep of this then only can tell that phycomycetes is also zygomycetes. Otherwise, some they have just copying of the things and they don't know the deepness of the subject. So mucormycetes, zygomycetes, phycomycetes, these are there, and ascospores. They are there, ascospores, which are having ascus-like structure. They are observed in the Aspergillus. Okay, they are observed in the Aspergillus and the Basidiospores. They are observed in the Basidiomycetes family, obviously. And what is the example of it? Example of this is Cryptococcus. Okay, the example of that is what? Cryptococcus. So remember all these particular ones: the Zygospores, Mucormycetes, or Zygomycetes. What comes in them? In them comes the Mucor, Rhizopus, Apsidia. Okay, Ascospores. The example ascospores, those which are having it, that is aspergillus, and basidiospores is cryptococcus. Okay, and just now we have done uh, besides in the morphological one, cryptococcus is east or east-like? Yes, please. Is it east or east-like? So, guys, this is true east. This is what this is what is termed as true east. So, remember that particular aspect also. Fine. And uh, there, one question which comes again and again is. Tell me those particular names which are lacking the sexual phase. They don't have that sexual phase, and which are they which don't have the sexual phase? So that particular one is Deutromycetes, guys. Okay, that particular one is what? That is Deutromycetes, and this is the family. This is the family which lack the sexual phase. Okay, they lack the sexual phase. This you need to remember. In this particular regard, okay. So Deutromycetes are the ones which lack the sexual phase. Otherwise, the other ones they all have this particular sexual spores, as you are seeing up. Okay. Now, this everybody tells you that these are the sexual spores and all. But there are asexual spores also on the basis of which you can classify, and those particular ones are which one, guys? So that also you should know. That is asexual spores. They are observed in which all? Okay, and what are the names first of all? So that is A, B, and C. A is arthrospores. Okay, what is A? A is arthrospores. B is Blastospores and C is chlamydospores. Okay, C is chlamydospores. These are what? These are asexual spores. And the sexual spores are this particular one that is Jub. Zygospores, ascospores, and basidiospores. Fine. And these are the asexual ones: arthrospores, blastospores, and chlamydospores. Now, the third important classification is based on location. Okay. The third important classification is based on what? That is based on location. And what is that? First is superficial mycosis. Okay. The first one is what? Superficial mycosis. And as the name suggests, what is superficial mycosis? In which superficial layers of the skin are involved. So that is termed as superficial mycosis. And what comes in this superficial mycosis? The name which you see up in the Skin that is dermatophytes. So dermatophytes they cause dermatophytosis, and dermatophytosis is a superficial mycosis. Okay. Along with that, you must have heard of these particular names. That is, Tinea versicala. Okay, Petriasis versicala. So these are also what superficial mycosis. These are also what they are also superficial mycosis. Fine. 
then you have the another one which are termed as subcutaneous mycosis the other one are what subcutaneous mycosis and in the subcutaneous mycosis you have these particular names that is mrcs and what comes in mrcs m is mycetoma okay what is m m is mycetoma what is r r is rhinosporidiosis okay r is what r is rhinosporidiosis what is c c is chromoblastomycosis okay c is chromoblastomycosis and s is sporotrichosis what is s s is sporotrichosis so these names you should know regarding the subcutaneous mycosis what are the names mycetoma rhinosporidiosis chromoblastomycosis and sporotrichosis fine so, what is subcutaneous mycosis skin and subcutaneous tissue both are involved so that is what is termed as subcutaneous mycosis that is mycetoma rhinosporidiosis chromoblastomycosis and sporotrichosis now coming to the deep mycosis as the name suggest deep mycosis means the systems are involved the deeper tissues are involved and in the deep mycosis d for d you remember up that what comes in the deep mycosis in the deep mycosis comes dimorphic fungal diseases okay what comes in that dimorphic fungal diseases and what is the mnemonic for dimorphic fungal diseases guys hsbc please try okay what is the mnemonic hsbc please try yes or no so this you need to know that what is the mnemonic hsbc please try and important important is in that the s was sporotrichosis okay but remember the sporotrichosis have come where sporotrichosis have come in the subcutaneous mycosis means this goes in exception okay this particular thing goes in exception that sporotrichosis is what the sporotrichosis is mainly a subcutaneous mycosis it is not a deep mycosis yes in the later form of the stage this can go into the deep mycosis but mainly it is what subcutaneous mycosis okay so this is also being asked that which particular dimorphic disease is mainly subcutaneous the answer is sporo okay the answer is sporotrichosis is it fine now in the deep mycosis along with the dimorphic fungal diseases what all things they come so here only the aspergillus comes okay here only the mucor comes okay the rhizopus comes so these all they are there in the deep mycosis so they can they are the ones which can do what deep mycosis also even you can put here candida and cryptococcus also in the deep mycosis okay in this particular one you can put up the those particular names also candida and cryptococcus so that is what is termed as deep mycosis so guys if you remember up these three classifications the first one the morphological classification the second one based on the sexual spores and asexual spores and the third one based on the location if you know these three things then the mycology is very easy okay then only you can put all the things at place so that's what the logic of knowing up the classifications fine so if we go up firstly regarding the tinea stuff and before starting that can you tell me that which is the culture media which we use for the various fungus so the main culture media which is being used everybody knows it answer is sda and what is sda sda is sebrodextrose agar okay what is sda sebrodextrose agar so that is what is termed as the culture media here and what is the ph of it it varies between 5.4 to 5.6 so basically you should know that this is a acidic ph because the fungus loves to grow in which particular ph they loves to grow in the acidic ph that is 5.4 to 5.6 so that you need to remember okay besides that if somebody ask you tell me some more like culture media names of the fungus so there are certain which you can remember of like bird seed agar okay bird seed agar other than that there are certain names like dtm and what is dtm dermatophyte identifying media 
okay uh, you can call them as dim also the dermatophyte identification media that is dim so all of these are also there like zapic docs number of others are there which are the culture medias but mostly people will tell you what sda okay so sda is the universal fungal culture media no doubt on that and the ph is how much ph is around 5.6 of this particular one is it fine now after this if we talk about certain fungal stains on which number of questions they are asked this time also and every time they ask up regarding the fungal stains so some of the important fungal stains will discuss up okay so first name is lpcb what is lpcb lactophenol cotton blue okay what is lpcb it is lactophenol cotton blue this is what is termed as the fungal stain lactophenol cotton blue and this is being used to stain up the various fungal elements fine so lpcb is one of the important ones other than that if you go up even h and e this is also being used for the fungus hematoxylin neosin stain this is also being used for the fungus then there is one which is being asked again and again that is indian ink stain indian ink stain and that was asked this time also in the exam and indian ink stain is being used up for which particular fungus guys cryptococcus and just now i told up cryptococcus is which sort of a fungus it's a true yeast it is a what it is a true yeast and this indian ink staining which we are talking about this is a negative stain what you call it as this particular one as what negative stain and this particular negative stain why we call it as negative stain because it stains the background not the organism that's why it is termed as what negative stain and it is being used for what cryptococcus and what we observe in that we observe the capsule what we observe we observe the capsule the thick glistening capsule of cryptococcus is formally observed in this negative stain of indian ink okay but remember the question which have come in your fmg exam was not regarding cryptococcus as all others are telling because they don't know that indian ink stain is also used for pneumococcus okay indian ink stain you can use even for pneumococcus and even for hemophilus influenzae okay these two particular bacteria for them also what you can use up indian ink stain to demonstrate their capsule okay to demonstrate their capsule you can use this particular stain for pneumo as well as hemophilus influenzae is it fine so these these are the extra points on which the question comes and you will be getting all at which particular form that is in the ln next stuff and that is the offline classes they give like uh, now i can interact up with you okay offline the same thing which i am like telling up here in the app is also there fine so you can have that online stuff also but in that the onus of completing of the things is all on you okay you have to complete it and obviously if you go for the micro completion easily it will take around 20 days of yours which i will be doing up in the offline session in 4 days and in 4 days you will be having the maximum retention for sure okay let me assure you that that after the class you you will be bagging up like uh, those particular 25 to 30 questions easily will be able to do those particular ones so that's what the effect of this particular offline class and uh, definitely you should go for it because online is a added source okay it can helps you to suppose something is missed out of yours that you can see off otherwise 20 days is one side and 4 days in another side because in 20 days you can revise also the same thing so that's what the logic of joining up the offline classes so and obviously it's too interactive also and you can ask up your doubts also so all these things are definitely they are the like well points of offline class fine so other names of the fungal stains if somebody ask you there is one which is termed as gms and what is gms gomori methamin silver okay what is gms gomori methamin silver that is what is the name of this particular one gomori methamin silver so this particular gomori methamin silver okay is being used for which particular one it is being used for pneumocystis xerovici okay the name which will be coming again and again in your preparation stuff that is pneumocystis xerovici and what does it do guys it does pneumonia atypical pneumonia 
in HIV positive at a CD4 count of how much? Less than 200. Okay, less than 200, this particular pneumocystis uroversi does the infection, and we use this specific stain that is Gomori methamine silver to diagnose it. And what we observed in GMS stain? We observed the cyst and we observed the trophozoid. And these particular forms, name, makes it a controversial fungus. Okay, makes it a controversial fungus because cyst and trophozoid is for what? It is for the parasites, not for the fungus. But the problem of pneumocystis zeroversi is you can't culture it. You can't culture it on the SDA. So that's what the problem of this particular one. And this particular cyst in the case of Gomori methamine silver looks like which color? It looks like black. It looks like black in color. And these particular cysts, why they look like black? Because the cyst is having what? Glycogen. What is it having? It is having glycogens. And it looks like this, a crushed ping pong ball appearance. A crushed ping pong ball appearance. That is what is observed in this particular cyst stuff. Okay. And the trophozoid, they look like which color? They look like green in color. Okay. Uh, because uh, this, this was AIMS question also. And in fact, it was asked in FMG exam also. That GMS stains which color? Original color of GMS is what? It stains which color? So it stains G for G, it stains green. But why does it turn cyst black? Why? Yes, tell. So it turns that black because it has a content, which one? Glycogen. And because of that, the color changes to what? Black. And how does it look like? It looks like under the microscope, crushed ping pong ball like appearance. Where the trophozoid, they stains which color? It stains green. Okay, it stains green. And other than that, this particular thing is like uh, keeps on, uh, the examiner keeps on asking this particular one and uh, the favorite of them is that what is the drug of choice for pneumocystis carne pneumonia. So that is also important, that is the cotrimoxazole, okay. That is what is cotrimoxazole, is it fine? So all these are very important points which you should know regarding the, these particular ones. Now other than these fungal stains, one name which like uh, being asked in the NEET PG exam, because uh, much of the questions of uh, FMG exam were from the NEET PG itself, repetition of them. And one of them was like, what about this particular dye? That is calcofluor white. And this calcofluor white, you remember, the calcofluor white is the fluorescent stain, okay? So this particular stain is the fluorescent stain that is termed as calcofluor white. Archana, very good. You told perfectly right. That is the pneumocystis zero vc and the clotrimoxazole. So this clotrimoxazole, not clotri, Archana, that is wrong. Clotrimoxazole is the drug of choice. The calcofluor white, this is the fluorescent stain of fungus. Okay, this is what is the fluorescent stain of fungus. And if I ask you now, what is the fluorescent stain for TB? The fluorescent stain for TB is oramin and rhodamin. Okay. And if we ask up for the malarial parasite del plasmodium, that is acridin orange. So these three names should immediately come in your mind. That is the calcofluor white, that is for the fungus. Okay, acridin orange, that is for the plasmodium. And oramin and rhodamin, they are separate dyes. They are used for what? Mycobacterium TB. Okay, so these are the important ones which should be remembered by you. Other than this, other than this, if I talk up, regarding a important disease on which number of questions they come, that is tenia versicalor, okay. Tenia versicalor, which is also termed as pityriasis versicalor. And in this, you find what? Hypopigmented to hyperpigmented scales over the trunk, over the axilla, these are observed up, okay. And in the DD of it, because of the hyperpigmentation, what comes? Leprosy comes in the DD of this particular one. And that can be easily ruled out by seeing of the sensations. That is the anesthesia stuff. Okay. So that is also important. Tenia versicala, the favorite question regarding tenia versicala, which is being asked again and again is, when you take the scales with the help of scalpel, okay, and you put those particular scales in 10% KOH, okay, you put them where? into 10% KOH, what you observe under the microscope? You observe spaghetti and meatball appearance, okay? What you observe? You observe this particular thing that is termed as spaghetti and meatball appearance. And what is spaghetti and meatball appearance? The spaghetti and meatball appearance is 
like these things, noodles, and along with the noodles, what is present? These meatballs. That is what is the logic of this particular spaghetti and meatball appearance. So everywhere, like in the class and all, everybody will tell you spaghetti and meatball appearance is observed in the case of Tina versicala, okay, which is also termed as Petriasis versicala. But nobody will tell you that it can be in the form of this way also in the exam. And what is that form? Short hyphae, okay. Short hyphae along with the E cells, okay. Short hyphae along with the E cells. This is also the transformation of this particular thing. So you should know that this is not the, like every time they will ask you spaghetti and meatball appearance also because this is a frequently asked question. But they can ask you the things like this also, the short hyphae with E cells, they are observed up in this particular disease. So answer is tinea versicala. Okay. So this is also to be remembered that in this way also the question can come in your exam. Okay. Now if we touch up the other important stuff that is regarding the PIDRA. So PIDRA is basically what hair nodules. Okay. If you see up certain uh, like uh, sadhu sant and all, unke baalo mein kya hoti hai? Thodi gaate si hoti hai. To wo unki koi siddhi nahi hai. Unko koon sa infection ho gaya hai? PIDRA ka. So PIDRA is basically the infection of what? The hair nodules. Okay. So that is the infection in which the hair nodules are produced up. And in this, it is of two types. One is white PIDRA and one is black PIDRA. Okay. The important is both of them were asked in the exam and in this way it was asked that what is the cost of organism for that. So for the black PIDRA it is PIDRE HORTE. Okay. For the black PIDRA it is PIDRE HORTE and for the white PIDRA it is TRICOSPORON BIJLI. Okay. TRICOSPORON BIJLI. Now how to remember this particular one? That is trichosporon bijli and all that stuff. So for that, in the like class only, we'll make up uh, new new mnemonics also. Okay. So tell me white. So how to relate up with this? So like as such, we have related how that bijli is bijli is what that uh, lightning. Okay. So bijli is what that lightning, white light during the monsoon season, that rainy season. So that is white in color. So white pidra is trichosporon bijli. Fine. And the black pidra, the black is hot. That is Pidre Horte. As Archana have told up, that is Pidre Horte. So white Pidra is Trichosporon Bichli and the black Pidra is Pidre Horte. Okay. Black Pidra is what? Pidre Horte. So this is this question was there in the NEET PG. This question was there in the FMG exam also. And they are the ones which comes again and again. Okay, which comes again and again. So these are the ones on which you should focus upon while like reading up okay it's not like everything you should read you should read that crux which have come the topics they repeat okay the topics they repeat themselves and that you need to know fine now if i talk about uh, in the micro stuff in the mycology one a lot of questions are coming up since two to three years regarding chromoblastomycosis okay lot of questions are coming off regarding this chromoblastomycosis and just now we have done that this is which type of mycosis? It is subcutaneous mycosis. This is which type of mycosis? It is subcutaneous mycosis and in the subcutaneous mycosis like this question have come in which form? A wood worker is there, okay? A person who is working or wood carpenter is there and gets a wood prick and after getting that wood prick develops a varicose lesion, okay? A varicose lesion means a warty lesion. It looks like a wart. Okay, varicose lesion. And when you have gone for the biopsy of this particular lesion, okay, and you have taken the biopsy tissue from this particular one and stain up with H and E, that is hematoxylin eosin stain, you could able to observe certain bodies here. Okay, and those particular bodies are which one? Those particular bodies are termed as medullar bodies. Okay, those particular bodies are termed as what, guys? Medullar bodies. And this question have come since three years in every exam. Okay. So medullar bodies, another name is what? Sclerotic bodies. Okay. The medullar bodies, another name is what? Sclerotic bodies. And the third name of them is what? Copper penny appearance they have. Okay. They have which type of appearance? They have a copper penny appearance and also termed as muriform cell appearance. And how to remember this? Remember with this particular stuff, that is MSC. That is medullar sclerotic 
and copper penny appearance. So, these all are important ones, the other names of medulla and these particular bodies they are characteristic of chromoblastomycosis ok and this thing is asked again and again. So, we will be discussing up all these particular ones with the full zeal that this have come and uh, what is all can come, uh, probable questions also. So, like let me tell you one more, uh, like one question came uh, in uh, NEET PG itself that is uh, because that is what is important for FMG also that there is a fungus that is termed as Candida cruzi. Okay. There is a fungus termed as what? Candida cruzi and Candida cruzi is found to be intrinsically resistant to azoles. Okay. It is found to be what? Intrinsically resistant to what? Azoles. Because they are the drug of choice, na? azoles. So, intrinsically resistant to azoles, this particular cruzi. The question was which of the drug of choice you will use for this Candida cruzi. So, this is for sure that this is resistant to what? Azoles, fine. So, obviously, which drug of choice you will use are here? So, for them, you have to go for LAMP. And what is LAMP? Liposomal amphotericin B. And these Candida cruzi, they are what? They are intrinsically resistant to what? Azoles. How to remember that? Cruise, okay. Cruzi means cruise. Cruise are resistant to holes, that is azoles remember like this because if the cruise is having hole it will dip down na? so that is why you remember like this the cruzi is what intrinsically resistant to azoles so cruzi are resistant to holes that is azoles so this way you can remember uh, most of the things and we will be like uh, reading up all these with the obviously the interaction of the class in this fashion that you will be having this in a long term memory. Okay. So, that is what is Ligandhi in the Canada which was asked recently and definitely can repeat. This question definitely can repeat once again. Other than that, the Cryptococcus neoformans, okay. Cryptococcus neoformans, this particular one. Can you tell me is it a true yeast or yeast like? So, guys up till now you should know that this is true yeast, fine. And most common cause of meningitis in whom? in HIV positive individuals, fine. And for that, the question which have come is, for this, you will prefer to do firstly the latex card agglutination test for the antigen or you want to go for Indian ink stain, okay. Which particular one you will prefer to go first, okay. The answer is obviously latex card agglutination test, that is there which you will go for rather than the Indian ink stain because they are specific for that particular cryptococcal antigen. So, that is why you will prefer to go for what? Latex card agglutination test for cryptococcal antigen, okay, more than the Indian ink. So, these, this is the way the differentiating should be done and uh, the other favorite question of examiner is that what is the drug of choice for cryptococcal neoformans? So, that also you know that is LAMP, liposomal amphotericin B along with the flu cytosine, okay. Now, Everybody knows about uh, black fungus, okay. Everybody knows about what? Black fungus. So, can you tell me which particular one is black fungus? So, everybody in this question is confused and this question will come definitely in the exam, okay. Because everybody is confused, so definitely they will try to give it in the exam. Black fungus is not mucor. Let me tell you very frankly that black fungus is not mucor. Black fungus is there in the chromoblastomycosis stuff. And the black fungus, if somebody asks you, is phylophora. Okay, this particular name, phylophora. This is black fungus. They are termed as dermataceous fungus. They are termed as dermataceous fungus. But now you will say, but why we have called that, that black fungus, mucor and all? So, guys, remember. Black fungus is not that, black fungus disease you can say that is mucormycosis because there is what? There is angiothrombosis in the case of mucor and because of that angiothrombosis what is produced? A blackish crust and that particular crust when you take the tissue biopsy and you stain up with 10 percent KOH or HNE, then you find the hyphae that is the aseptate hyphae obtuse angled or right angled, fine. So, because of that particular crust formation, blackish crust, blackish ashkar formation, 
that's why that was termed as black fungus wrongly but actually that is what a black fungal disease so black fungus is which one this one that is phyllophora cladosporium alternaria number of those which are termed as dermataceous fungus also termed as phyoid fungi nobody at least i think lot of them will not be knowing up that the dermataceous fungus another name is phyoid fungi so this also he needs to remember is it fine guys so this is there the dermataceous fungus and phyllophora and cladosporium they are termed as black fungus black fungus is not what mucor mucor is not black fungus remember that fine that is the black black fungal disease that's fine but this is not black fungus is it fine so this question is definitely be coming up and uh, i have already told of what you observe in that aseptate hyphae obtuse angled and right angled that will be observed up even colonies was asked in your fmg exam cotton woolly colonies they are observed on the sda along with that it was been there that there is a history of prolonged steroid use that is there in this particular question or some they can say there is a history of diabetic ketoacidosis some will say there is a history of diabetes mellitus prolonged history of that in all of them these particular are opportunistic fungi so they will be coming up in these immunosuppressed individuals so whenever you think of these immunosuppression and all you should think for zygomycetes stuff is it fine guys so this is the way to read up the things and this is the way to know that this question can come that question can come another like one of the last things if i like to tell you up so there aspergillus this particular topic every time in the exam they ask a question regarding the aspergillus in the aspergillus they you know that the various species are there aspergillus like aspergillus flavus okay fumigatus niger fine so the clavatus number of them are there and in the aspergillus what their favorite question is that this lesion is there you have taken the biopsy and you have put it in 10% koh or hnd and what you observe you observe this type of structure and what is that septate hyphae okay septate hyphae angle of 45 or angle of 60 degree this is found and this particular stuff is termed as what dicotomous branching dicotomous branching septate hyphae angle of 45 or 60 is a characteristic of which one aspergillus how to remember remember like this aspergillus is having in the last what s so it is having septations mucor mucor is not having an s it is aseptate so like that you should remember of the things and uh, in this also that aspergillus easily you can remember of s that is septate hyphae septate hyphae are observed in this particular one and one of the recent question which have came is that what is the drug of choice for invasive aspergillosis for the invasive aspergillosis you should know the drug of choice is what that is voriconazole what is the drug of choice voriconazole for the invasive aspergillosis is it fine guys so these all are important stuff which you should know and if you know them they are the most repeated questions of the like uh, recent times even in the neat pg even in the fmg and if you focus upon all these particular aspects properly you will able to answer up most of your questions in your exam okay and i have already stressed upon to you that what's the use of uh, having a offline class the use of offline classes in the app also the same things are there okay and uh, that particular thing will take how much time around 20 days to complete microbiology along with the various questions various aspects easily it will take around how much 20 days and in the class with thorough revision you will be ending this in 4 days and the onus this time in the class is on me to make you learn and end of the things in 4 days whereas onus in the app is with whom with you okay so that's what the importance which you should know of the offline class and do join up as it is given up in the comment section also our uh, sessions are starting up from the 6th of february so you can join up the allen next and we have uh, like uh, you can uh, do the online registration also and you can come for the offline stuff at the the offline center of allen okay so basically we are starting up uh, from the 6th fab and uh, tomorrow we have a demo session of uh, dr ashwini and this time you know already that psm questions were in plenty in the exam and uh, i am very happy to say that particular thing 
that from my notes there were like every question was there okay it was bit easy this time for the micro but easy is nothing because lot of questions of uh, some sort of general microbiology also came like one of the questions was like for the ethylene oxide which particular control you will use so the ethylene oxide is a high level disinfectant and for that you can use two types of biological indicators you can use bacillus globigii but that was not there in the option the other one was bacillus atrophius which we also use for hot air oven so this type of crux knowledge of microbiology was also asked in the exam so, and even one one question matters so this is what is the crux of the things that you should revise the stuff again and again because the only mantra for success is what revision revision and revision and the other one is stick to your notes okay whatever you are reading up for the first time you should read it again along with the mcqs if you have this particular sort of a habit and complete other things with multiple revisions you will all surely pass so join up the island next we are here 